The first time I arrived here in Antigua, just here in English Harbour, that was the arrival of my first Transat when I was 19 in 79. With a sextant, no GPS, nothing, no radio, no contact, no assistance, just on a small little six meter and a half boat. That was such an adventure. I discovered the West Indies, palm trees and, and the pina colada at, here at, uh, at the Admiral Inn and all the horns of all the big ships, boom, 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 you know, waving a little boy arriving on his very tiny boat. That was very impressive, yes. I'm coming back to the roots, maybe. I love it. Well, this event's, uh, you know, it's uh, iconic. The absolute top of the rung for Caribbean offshores. I love this race, not just for uh, the temperature and the, the warm waters. Uh, it's uh, tactic, tactic and very interesting race. Brilliant tactics, brilliant strategy, doing the proper maneuvers at the right time. It's going to be every maneuver, every corner is going to be decisive. You do always some error. So if you do less error, normally you win. <laughs> but you never know until the end. For each race, I hope the same thing. We intend to be the first. Unfortunately, everybody wants to be first. And sometimes, I, I, unfortunately, I don't succeed each time, you know? but sometimes I succeed, yes. <laughs>back again 2022 74 entries this time I mean you can't ask for more than that especially after you know COVID year and 32 nations represented with a with a, some 750 sailors I mean it's just amazing up at Fort Charlotte I mean it's incredible I mean you kind of forget about it once you after after a year and then you get back there and it's just to, to see all the boats racking up and you're in awe of the, the enormous cliffs and, and then just the beautiful sea below it it just kind of moves it takes the fleet away around around the corner of Antigua it's just an incredible feeling it's phenomenal just to, to see that sight. this year multi-hull incredible right I mean we had all, all the, the the big three mod 70s coming back to to play again and and um, this year taking it out as Argo you know and, and Argo is their first win for them and, and taking a new race record at 29 hours 38 minutes and 44 seconds it's pretty incredible um, and it, you know I had a tussle all the way to the line with Maserati it's just an incredible race so the mod 70s are one design multi-hull one design that's MOD and some of them try to um, 
to modify them, to tweak them. And so it's interesting here, you have the three examples of three different MODs. You have the Maserati one, which is the full foiling with a full, full foiling package. You have here Argo, which is something between, different set of foils, able to fly a little better. And power play is not uh, to be as it was 17 years ago. Only the foils are a little longer, but anything else is the same. I mean, this race is always an emotional roller coaster. Uh, I think we traded leads with the other boats uh, five or six times. It would be hard to recount them. They arrived to, to beat us uh, just in the last uh, 15 minutes. It was a boat on boat uh, kind of tacking duel between two Mod 70s uh, out here in the Sound, and it was, it was awesome. It was a fantastic race. We know that uh, we are very close and the level is very high, so great experience learn many things. Just watching the other boat sail next to you helps you understand how what your boat looks like, which you don't get to see from off, off, off the boat very often. It's, they're, they're pretty amazing machines. A few years ago we were here, we nearly won it after capsizing, and that was a massive, massive effort and uh, then the next time we came, we just lost out as well. So it's really good. Third time is a charm. This race I, I like very much. We do it already many times, so and uh, especially if there is Argo and power play, I will be back for sure. <laughs> yeah, IRC1 this year was a really competitive fleet. It was tough conditions for those guys in IRC1, but Sunrise came through again, um, you know, after a successful year with Rolex Fastnet. Behind them was close competition with Ed Bell and, and Dawn Treader. And then again, following up with them is um, Launch de Milan with Jacques Spalletier. And, and all of those guys were in uh, last year's Rolex Fastnet and really competitive and amazing. What I was expecting is a 20 knot blast around the Caribbean. And what I got was a very technical, complicated race with a boat chasing us that were obviously putting on an amazing performance. <laughs> this is the first time that we've raced Dawn Treader in anger since before the Fastnet in 2021, so they gave us a hell of a race. From the start, all the way around, we knew they pushed it very hard and we were desperately trying to catch them. And we got ahead of them a couple of times and then we lost it and then we lost by, it looks like about 10 minutes. I would say it's the toughest race we've ever had with Don Treader. They have pushed us to the limit the whole way around. Yeah, it was, it was really, really good fun to, to, to have a, a tough competition all the way around. Yeah, in IRC2 this year, we, you know, we, we always see a, a, some regular favourites there and, and Scarlet Oil this year clinching their eighth win in, in class. I mean, I think they've done that seven times on, on Scarlet Oyster itself and, and an extra one with another boat. But then after that, you know, we had behind it EHO1, Andy Middleton, no stranger to the Caravan 600 and, and Jangata, Richard Palmer, our two-handed coming up, come and bring up third. So that's a really good effort. I guess we kind of felt in control of the race, more or less, most of the way around. We got off to a good start and we were ahead of the other guys in the water who mostly owed us time, so that was sort of quite, quite good and we were able to keep ourselves between them and the next mark and seemed to have good boat speed. And, but I think what was really 
again, like always, the guys work hard, but especially this time, we never had somebody on the wrong side of the boat. And we really, in the whole whole race this time, there was very little I can look back at and think we could have done anything better, which is unusual for a race this long. So it was a really clean lap round. It's all you can do, sell the best you can. And so that was that was very pleasing. Yeah, this year really happy with class 40s. I mean, we had 10 entries and, and 10 entries we really didn't expect. It had been a year, busy year for class 40s before that. This year we had uh, Finamo taking the title right at the end of the race against uh, Guidi, which is, you know, a sensational effort for them um, and, and really close battle like a lot of the other classes. to finish in, in the top three. So we had a very good start and a, a very good uh, reaching from uh, Antigua to Barbuda. And we managed to be first. Then there was a, a nice fight with Giddy, but they, they smashed us uh, downwind. They were faster. Uh, like we, we said, like we had a joke on board, like the Hydra, the boat, like every time you chop its head, like it goes back and you see him on the AIS again, you know? So yeah, no, it was like amazing race on them. I'm really happy they won because they really fought really hard. It must have been so much harder for them because you know they didn't have the, the power we have. So it's just amazing to finish before the night with a match race uh, until the finish line. Unexpected and good, uh, good for us. Very friendly class. Like everybody from the top to bottom in the class is super friendly, super competitive as well. Oh, it's such a well done class. All the design, all the class rules are well done. The Caribbean 600 is just the, the race for the class 40. It's a, it's a very good race, lots of reaching, lots of trade, well, except today. <laughs> uh, I think it's the best place to be uh, with crew on board this boat because four people in a boat that is normally designed for one and two is much better uh, in this weather where it's warm and uh, you don't have much gear. That's just fantastic. Come to the Caribbean 600, I tell you. <laughs> Great to see the heavyweights in, in Super Zero coming back together after after Malta. You know we had obviously Comanche, um, you know, sailboat Mitch Booth is you know impressive yacht already, and then on top of that's the the monstrous Scorpius. Um, you know that's sailed by Fernando Ishivara and, and just incredible. So you know, Scorpius took it this time, which was a bit of a change from from earlier in the year, but you know great for them. You know the title each on this one, so it's good. It's the first uh, Caribbean six hundred for Scorpius and for even for myself and some crew members. So super proud of all the team that have made this possible. It's been a super interesting race. Uh, luckily, we have very good results. In the beauty of the islands is something unbelievable, this race. We hope to be here next year. There was a pretty close cross coming back out on Port Tack with Scorpius, uh, they, they crushed us every time we tacked, they tacked on us. So it was a full match race move to the first point, but they did a great job and uh, defended from there on. So it was, it was a good job from Scorpius. The game's never over, you know, in this sort of race, particularly when it's a, you know, it's not a point to point or a long offshore without all these obstacles. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of opportunities right till the end. I'm sure this is uh, just the beginning of a rivalry. You know, we know the team, sail the sailors on the boat very well. You know, it's great, you know, good, healthy, you know, competition and we're looking forward to the next battle. The bit that I haven't looked at is I haven't looked at the weather much after we finish. So I haven't looked at that, but I would have thought that uh, a Warrior One was having a very good race with Christopher Sheehan and a very good team on board. Sunrise, of course, was doing well. I think 
the 52s probably do a little better than, than Sunrise in that. And I noticed the teaser machine was, was up there. So I, I think it's probably going to be uh, the 52, but um, you never know. It would be nice to, to uh, win Super Zero on the handicap. That would be uh, a good achievement. This year the Volvo fleet's been amazing. We had six Volvo 70s and uh, three Volvo 65s. I mean, giving us nine, it was just incredible to see them all racing. We had lots of success with the Volvo boats in the past. We had Wizard, you know, another Volvo 70 winning the race overall. So they've had a great time, you know, really competitive. We've also seen the, the Polish guys come to, to come to town and really do well. We had Gruvaderci sailing Poland, um, coming in third. And then we've also had Isle of Poland doing a putting good, good performance as well and, and um, taking out CSA, so really good effort. The best for this race is that you are going around the beautiful islands. It's a beautiful sky, beautiful sea. Everything is beautiful, but it was really hard and a lot of changes, a lot of uh, wind holes. So frustrating, but perfect. There's a few, few Volvos, few 65 few uh, Volvo 70s. I think it's perfect competition. I mean, we are, we are lucky that we, are, we joined this race. We are lucky that we, that we actually won with the Volvo 70s. So, perfect feeling, thank you. I've never put together a team at the last minute before and had it work out so well. Fabulous, I mean, really, all great, great guys, great sailors, obviously. And, and a great group of people to be, to be doing this race with, for sure. They all got your back. Uh, we've experienced, I think, every kind of condition possible <laughs> in a 600-mile <laughs> continuous loop. Uh, it's been fine. Uh, the weather is beautiful. Great company with the boys here and in good hands. Some wonderful sea life, whales, birds. It's just, there's been a lot to look at and um, it's, it's been a lovely event. I mean, this year in IRC Zero, I mean, it's a highly competitive fleet. There's no argument with that. You have our eventual winner, you know, um, coming from IRC Zero, but you've had followed through with um, Tala and then Callisto. I mean, it's just incredible. So definitely the rise of the 52-footer there. I mean, Warrior One, taking it overall. I mean, just an incredible race for those guys, new to Rourke, new to the race. I mean, it's, it's great to see them, um, you know, and great to see them doing really well. But following that up with Comanche, 100 footer coming in second place, you can't argue with that, right? I mean, that's just an incredible effort for those guys to, to, to back, it after, back it up after Middle C as well. So, yeah, amazing. I feel uh, so much joy right now and uh, a huge amount of humility and I'm, I'm humbled to be to count myself among the winners who have been trying to win this race for as many years as she's been in existence and kudos to all those competitors. I, I count myself to be very lucky among those who have won it. I would say the 600 rates as one of the hardest in the world. It's like I equate this to a, a 10 round heavyweight boxing match and the lefts and the rights and, the, and they just keep coming at you and you're just doing and you're playing offense and you're playing defense and you're waiting for the knockout punch to hit you because at any moment you could park up for hours and lose your lead. No lead safe until the very end. We've instituted essentially a two and a half year testing program so that we know at every given angle, at every given wind strength, we know what our best sail combinations are and we were testing uh, all the, the angles that we knew were going to be key for this race. And then it's just all about execution. Part of the secret to the success is the team that we have. So having Stu Bannatyne and Richard Clark, and I can go every name right on down the boat, 
That is the reason for our success. And that's because these guys are at the elite end of the sport. And for me, I'm just lucky to be able to tag along with, with a group like this. They're just magnificent sailors. To win a race like this, you have to have you know, a, a, a perfectly prepared boat, a great team, the right sails, the right program, everything just goes into it to just give it that absolute level you know, that you have to have in order to perform. It's rather odd, but it's my mantra on how I run the Warrior One program, and it is humility and positive ego. There's such thing as negative ego. That's when everyone's bad side comes out and there's finger pointing or blame or hierarchy where I don't do that, you know, that's your job. These fellas bring uh, positive ego, which is ex uh, uh, extreme confidence in what they're doing, but also the humility to take feedback, to ask questions, to tap out when they're exhausted, or to uh, have a belief that they don't have the answers to everything. And, th and that brings this work ethic and this um, chemistry that makes the vocal faster and it's very important. Well to win a race like this is, uh, is literally a dream come true and I think one of the aspects of this race is the sleep deprivation so I, I still might be dreaming because I haven't caught up on my sleep yet uh, but it, it's just fantastic I mean such a fantastic race and this this program of Christian we put so much into it and to to realize our potential and to realize a, a great great victory like this you know holy cow I just it's a it's really a dream come true The 600 is an incredible race. You don't stop learning with this race. I mean, this year, everyone would have thought trade wins were going to be the conditions, but as we know, they weren't. And I think everyone takes something away from that. The race committee learn, competitors learn. You find out, you know, your path in the course, and it's an amazing race for that reason. You just keep on learning. Special thanks have to go to Antigua and Barbuda Tourism. I mean, they're incredible, right? I mean, they, they support us all the way. We've got Antigua Yacht Club also supporting us. We have great support from Brydens and our, our Carib sponsorship with those guys are amazing. This year we are joined by Access Marine, gave us support with our internet coverage and, and our live streaming which have been great. And then also we have you know, Antiguan Distilleries uh, supporting us with their English Harbour Rum, an incredible sponsor, you know, great partner. 20th of February 2023, the 14th edition, we look forward to seeing you there. Hey guys, smile, you're on camera. <coughs>
before you cross me, baby, cause I don't break for boys. Finish line. Let's go.